This is the moment digital research dropped the ball. IBM, distinctly unimpressed with their reception, went back to Microsoft. Bill Gates isn't the man to give a rival a second chance. He saw the opportunity of a lifetime. Digital research didn't seize that, and we knew it was essential. If somebody didn't do it, the project was going to fall apart, so... We just got carried away and said, look, we can't afford to lose the language business. That was the initial thought. We can't afford to have IBM not go forward. This is the most exciting thing that's going to happen in PCs. And we were already out on the limb because we had licensed them not only BASIC, but Fortran, COBOL, Assembler, uh, Typing Tutor, Adventure. And basically every, every product the company had, we had committed to do for IBM in a very short time frame. But there was a problem. IBM needed an operating system fast, and Microsoft didn't have one. What they did have was a stroke of luck, the ingredient everyone needs to be a billionaire. Unbelievably, the solution was just across town. Paul Allen, Gates' programming partner since high school, had found another operating system. There's a local company here in, in, uh, in Seattle called Seattle Computer Products, a uh, guy named Tim Patterson, and he had done an operating system, very rudimentary operating system that was kind of like CPM. And we just told IBM, look, we'll go get this operating system from the small local company, we'll take care of it, we'll fix it up, and you can still do a PC. Tim Patterson's operating system, which saved the deal with IBM, was, well, adapted from Gary Kildall's CPM. So I took a CPM manual that I'd gotten from the retail computer store, $5 in 1976 or something, and uh, used that as the basis for uh, the, what the, what we, the application programming interface, the API for my operating system. And so uh, using these, these ideas that uh, came from different places, I started in April, and it was about half time for four months I, uh, before I had my, my first working version. This is it. The operating system Tim Patterson wrote. He called it QDOS, the quick and dirty operating system. Microsoft and IBM called it PCDOS 1.0. And under any name, it looks an awful lot like CPM. On this computer here, I have running a PCDOS and CPM86, and frankly, it's very hard to tell the difference between the two. The command structures are the same, so are the directories. In fact, the only obvious external difference is the floppy drive is labeled A in PCDOS, and C and CPM. Some difference, and yet one generated billions in revenue and the other disappeared. As usual in the PC business, the prize didn't go to the inventor, but to the exploiter of the invention. In this case, that wasn't Gary Kildall. It wasn't even Tim Patterson. There was still one problem. Tim Patterson worked for Seattle Computer Products, or SCP. They still owned the rights to QDOS, rights that Microsoft had to have. But then we went back and said to them, look, you know, we want to buy this thing. And SCP was, like most little companies, they, you know, always needed cash. And so that was when they went into the negotiation. And uh, so ended up working out a deal to, uh, uh, to buy the operating system uh, from him for, for, for whatever usage we, you know, we wanted for $50,000. Hey, let's pause there to savor an historic moment <laughs> for whatever usage we, you know, we wanted for $50,000. It had to be the deal of the century, if not the millennium. It was certainly the deal that made Bill Gates and Paul Allen multi-billionaires and allowed Paul